So um, after I give my um, introduction and talk a little bit about more about DPLA's digital asset pipeline to Wikimedia Commons and, and what we've built over the last few years, um, I'll um, pass the mic to Peter. Uh, is everybody on mute? Okay, I'll pass the, the mic to Peter Kukla um, from the State Library of Ohio, who uh, represents the Ohio Digital Network. And then after that, um, Angela O'Neill, um, who's the local history and genealogy manager at the Columbus Metropolitan Library. Um, we'll talk about the, the actual collection um, that we're talking about. And then I, I've also invited uh, Jamie Flood, who's from our DPLA's Wikimedia Working Group, um, to help us um, with the discussion at the end as well. Um, so increasingly, uh, this, <laughs> this part of my presentation, this slide is very brief. Um, but I'm going to start with, you know, why, why are we working with Wikipedia? Um, you know, we're, if, if you are a library and you have a digital collection and your goal, um, you know, is for that digital collection to be accessed, um, then, uh, Wikipedia is kind of a, an essential, uh, platform for that. Wikipedia is one of the most viewed websites on the internet. Uh, it's already the number one source that people go to for reference information and, uh, you know, ranks highly in Google and all of that. Um, and I don't think any of this is news to any of you. Um, and I will also point out that um, because of that, uh, cultural heritage collections already are, are in Wikipedia and getting billions of views uh, every year. And, uh, you know, we'll talk more about this, but uh, just to give you an inkling of the scale, we back in 2020 now when we started this project, you know, we were already seeing millions of page views for our partners in the first few months of uploading their materials. So um, starting in 2020, uh, DPLA uh, built what we're kind of calling our digital asset pipeline to Wikimedia. Um, and this is just what I mean in very broad terms. Uh, DPLA as an aggregator receives data in from our partners. Um, the individual institutions or hubs uh, host the media files that we're actually gonna pass to Wikimedia Commons. So those are kind of the two um, ingredients. And we take those things, we upload uh, the primarily image content to Wikimedia Commons, which um, if you have not heard of is uh, basically the file repository um, for Wikipedia and its sister projects, Wikimedia projects. Um, and then we're doing that with the, uh, the end goal that many of those images as appropriate that we've uploaded to Wikimedia Commons uh, will then be able to be placed, embedded into Wikipedia articles um, where they're gonna get really broad usage. So that's the big idea. Um, how we got here, we started this project in 2020 as um, sort of a pilot. Uh, and that first year was with um, Sloan Foundation funding. And then um, over the last two years, um, we received a series of smaller grants from the Wikimedia Foundation to do a lot more technical development. Um, and so the, uh, the sorts of things we've done have allowed us to uh, continually synchronize the metadata um, that when it's reharvested from partners um, and kind of do do more more of that um, do more uh, technical things with the with the uploads um, and uh, where we are right now is um, in the midst of a second larger uh, grant from the Sloan Foundation and so our um, our mandate at the DPLA level is um, you know we are currently funded um, with this big idea to, to just generally build capacity for partners to engage in the Wikimedia work. And the idea is the PLA as this aggregator and central force in the, the field um, is uh, organizing uh, our network of institutions to uh, provide technical support for the 
institutions and uh, the support to allow them to get involved in the Wikimedia projects. Um, so just really brief key facts of where we are now. After these first few years of the project, we've uploaded almost three or almost four million um, files to Wikimedia Commons, which makes DPLA the largest contributor to Wikimedia Commons, um, the largest like single entity, I should say, um, and received over 300 million page views. We have hundreds of institutions that are contributing um, to this project. And uh, like I said, now we're now at a point where we're uh, continually updating the data. So it's not just like a one-time dump at the point of upload. And so it's really like part of DPLA's aggregation um, process. So that's my brief overview, um, I think. Yes, okay. And now I'm gonna hand the mic over to Peter and then Angela to um, give the perspective from those of you in the DPLA network that are participating. I will Hello. Start my uh, I'm going to go ahead and share something real quick. Okay, can you all see my presentation? Anyone? Yes. Okay. It looks good. Okay, so the Ohio Digital Network hopped onto the IIIF train about October-ish of 2021. And just in this presentation, I'm gonna give like a 10,000 foot overview of what happens to the data after it's handed off to us from say Columbus Metropolitan. Uh, so quite. Uh, CML or some other organization has their records harvested by Ohio Digital Network, and we're going to upload them to DPLA. Question is, what do we need to do with those records after they've been uploaded to us, but before we upload them to DPLA to make them Wikimedia compatible? Answer is, um, we just basically confirm that they are eligible. And then if they are eligible, we add the appropriate metadata to the records when uploading them. So the eligible or eligibility requirements. First step, we have to confirm that the record has rights that make it appropriate for Wikimedia because if something is under copyright, it can't be shared. Um, basically, I am searching for these URL or URIs in the rights metadata. Uh, the Creative Common ones will generally have be much longer than this because they have additional parameters and so forth, but this is what we're looking at. So I look at a record, if it has this right or one of these rights, then I say, okay, that's the first step towards it being eligible. Then I look at one other thing, has this uh, collection, because in Ohio we harvest on a collection by collection basis, has this collection been opted in for participation in the Wikimedia project? Um, we enhance records only with, or with IIF metadata only when we are asked to do so. Uh, so once we have confirmed that the record's rights are correct for participation in Wikimedia, we then look at the record and say, okay, it came from collection X that we harvested. Is that collection in the list of collections that we have opting in? If so, then I will go ahead and generate the appropriate uh, IIIF metadata and enter it into that record and get it ready for upload at DPLA. Otherwise, I just skip on to the next record. Uh, if you wanted to participate in Ohio, uh, what do you need to make, do to make this happen? Uh, first, you need to tell myself or Penelope Shoemaker, who also works in DPLA stuff here in Ohio, which collections you have that should be flagged for the Wikimedia processing. Because like I said, we don't know offhand which ones you want. So you need to tell us so we can flag them. Next, you need to configure your own server for the Wikimedia processing. Um, if you have a content dam server, good news. It's pretty much all built in. You don't have to do anything in terms of the Wikimedia stuff or the triple IF stuff rather. I uh, just set it up for harvesting for OAI PMH and you're done. For other servers, I think we have one DSpace server that we're harvesting and getting IIIF information out of. They, other servers are going to require, I believe, additional 
configuration. It won't work out of the box. Um, it would also take a little work, work on my side to do some stuff on my side. It's not quite as automatic as the content DM, but it is still fairly simple. Um, and that's pretty much it. Those are the only two things that need to happen on our side to make this stuff work. Um, if you are in Ohio and you need more details, we can give you a list of all the collections that you are submitting to us and tell you which ones are being uh, processed for this Wikimedia information. Um, we could also say, okay, these are collections that we are harvesting but are not currently enrolled. If you wanted to enroll this specific collection, this, this is how many records out of that collection would be eligible for the participation. So we can give you sort of an evaluation for on a collection by collection basis, which might help you. Um, and that's pretty much it for me. Um, I will go ahead and try to turn it over to Angela. Okay. My right. screen. screen looks good. Yep. Fantastic. Thanks, Peter. Um, it, it, it seems so simple when you talk about it, but it's magic to me. So I appreciate that overview. Um, let's see here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do on the, at the Columbus Metropolitan Library, um, how we get things from the beginning um, over to um, the state library for them to be able to um, add to DPLA. So, here at the Columbus Metropolitan Library, we've been digitizing historical materials since the late 1990s, but we really ramped up about um, 2010 to a full-scale digitization program. Today, we have a million and a half, roughly, images online in our My History Digital Collection. That includes our own materials, as well as those of our 63 partner organizations and library customers who come into the library and allow us to scan their own materials. And you can view all of that directly through www www.columbuslibrary.org slash myhistory. Um, so Ohio Digital Network. Um, so CML has been a um, champion of DPLA here in Ohio since the beginning. We served as the fiscal agent for the original planning grant for Ohio and um, contributed materials since the first round. So we're really excited to see ODN grow to what it is today. Um, today, we have about 67,000 records being harvested by ODN. We continue to grow as we add materials to my history. We, um, the numbers are a little different there because we have a large amount of digitized newspaper content that's not harvested, as well as some of our partner um, collections that have not been um, remediated for DPLA yet, but we're working on those with our partners as well. Otherwise, anything that we do in-house um, automatically um, makes it into the next harvest that happens um, through Peter's work. So um, we had a customer request a while back um, from um, one of our longtime customers, Michael Feist. Um, so um, before getting involved with Wikimedia through DPLA, I should set back, we had worked with several library customers who were very engaged in Wikipedia and Wikimedia work. Um, Michael Feist, who you see there with his camera, um, has been working on editing Wikipedia entries for many years, um, focusing on Columbus history. Um, he even won um, the Ed Lentz Prize from Columbus Landmarks for his work on, he worked on over 400 Wikipedia articles um, that really um, have become a great resource for Columbus history. Um, as an aside, we don't have um, our last book on um, scholarly book on Columbus history ends in 1936, so we have a huge gap on <laughs> what um, is out there. So Mike's work has been really great in filling in some of those gaps. Um, we've also been in touch with the Ohio Wikimedians user group, which has been pretty active here in Columbus, a strong connection to Ohio State University there, um, because a lot of the uh, folks that are part of that group are students. Um, and so they've been kind of slowly working on adding some of our images. Um, back in 
April 23, though, um, Mike reached out to me about the possibility of adding our images to Wikimedia through DPA, DPLA at a much larger scale. At that point, he had added a thousand images manually, which is amazing, I would say. Um, and as you'll see, we've um, since then been able to add about 330,000 images. So he's he's been very grateful. Um, so we were aware of the ODN program, but we really hadn't had time to consider getting involved, just all the other things, you know, in the world um, to do. With the interest um, from Mike, though, we decided to investigate more and reached out to um, Penelope and Peter, and they did exactly what Peter said. They sent us a list of all of our collections and which items, a number of items and which ones would be eligible super easy. Um, remember, as Peter said, that um, items cannot be added without, um, well, items cannot be added to DPLA without, DPLA without right statements, and only items in the public domain or publicly licensed can be added to Wikimedia. Luckily, we were in good shape there because um, in 2021, we had um, received a metadata mini grant from the State Library of Ohio through um, LSTA funds from IMLS. And we're super grateful for that because that set us up to be able to respond to this request and make this whole thing happen. So because of that grant, we were in a good place to support this project because we use those funds to remediate right statement for a, a huge amount of um, records, um, over 63,000 records in our collection. We were able to add the, what we believe are proper right statements for them. Um, and that happened because a lot of our, our early digital collections um, either didn't have right statements at all or had just kind of generic right statements that we didn't think were, were really accurate. So. We were able to um, work with a Kent State MLIS student to do some bulk find and replace um, actions based on publication dates um, and um, creation dates and that sort of thing. Um, and we're able to get um, all of those um, um, metadata records remediated. So we had a nice um, collection of materials that were eligible, which helped. So then um, to back to the harvest, just as Peter said, um, he goes in and um, adds a IIIF data. We didn't honestly do anything. Peter did all the work here. <laughs> so we just said yes, and um, everything worked. We are as a content DM shop, so that makes it also a little bit easier. Um, and as Peter said, that um, everything just went through pretty easily. So um, this is the page for Columbus Metropolitan Library um, on Wikimedia at this point. So as a result of all of that magic, um, we were able to get 330,000 um, images into Wikimedia. And um, we've been in touch with Mike Feist, the customer who brought this to our attention in the first place. And he is just thrilled, um, as are we, to be able to see all this material out there and available for people to use. Um, Dominic stats have shown that this is definitely a project that's reaching people and being used and probably by um, some people who haven't ever set foot into our library and may not even be anywhere near us to be able to do so. So we are super excited about that um, and really happy to be here representing um, Ohio in this coffee chat as well. And I think I am turning it over to Jamie. Is that right? I'm, I'm going to. Dominic? Okay. I'm going to bring it home, talk more All about right. the Wikipedia end, and then <laughs> I'll, yeah, turn it over to Jamie. Um, so I'm going to re share my screen again. Um, so we've talked about all of the, um, the layers or the uh, stages in the pipeline um, up to you know, now the uploads have actually been done. Um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about what what's next, what happens after that. Um, and I will also, I I uh, forgot the, the main housekeeping item I should have said at the top of the hour, which is 
Um, we've structured this coffee chat uh, like differently from most coffee chats, which is um, we're going to have the um, the regular uh, coffee chat hour, and um, we'll uh, turn it over for for discussion in a few minutes when I finish. But then we've also um, scheduled an optional second hour on the calendar if you are able to stay, um, in which uh, we will do more hands-on editing. So if you're interested in learning uh, more about how you would actually do these things, I'm gonna show you briefly right now. Um, stay for the second hour and um, we will, uh, even if you've never registered a Wikipedia account before or have no experience, um, we'll actually do some work on uh, the, the CMLs um, collections that we're talking about today and get them into Wikipedia articles. Um, so just to demonstrate, uh, just kind of in uh, slide deck form though, um, quickly what we're talking about. This is, you know, an, an ideal uh, end product of this whole pipeline. So I'm showing you a Wikipedia article um, about a historical figure. The photo here uh, in, this, in this image actually comes from, uh, was uploaded by, by DPLA and uh, came through Digital Commonwealth, and I think is a Boston Public Library uh, image. Um, so from another one of our partners. And I'm using, uh, <laughs> maybe awkwardly, but I'm, I'm gonna not use CML examples in the slides because I didn't want to, to uh, do any of the edits and take away all of our opportunities uh, to do things in the next hour. So I'm, I'm using other examples. Um, this is another example of very similarly of a, an image that was a, a historical photo that, that came to Wikipedia through the digital asset pipeline. Um, I think what's interesting to point out here is, whereas the first example is uh, you know, a photo of that subject, uh, a portrait in which he's described as the subject uh, of that item, um, this is a photo in which the uh, the car here that's being depicted and the make and model and all that were not uh, noted in the description. Um, so oh. the photo oh. is actually something that was uh, you know, created, but uh, the, this the historical record was created by someone for a different intention, not to like uh, you know depict the subject of this. Dodge Meadowbrook car, but a Wikipedian identified oh, right that that's the car uh, that's that's in the um, that's in the photo. So both of those are kind of different ways in which we see that these images can be used. So I'm going to go through uh, kind of a an example, start to finish, of uh, an image from from di a, a digital collection making its way into a Wikipedia article. Um, this is a different example. This is a, a historical. Uh, stereograph um, photo from the uh, collections of uh, the uh, making the, the middle Georgia archives. I have it on another slide. I don't know why I'm trying to remember it now, uh, but as you can see here from Macon, Georgia and came to us for, through the Digital Library of Georgia. Uh, so that's the original image. You know, it exists in the Digital Library of Georgia's um, uh, site here comes to DPLA, this is what it looks like in DPLA, um, through the process that Peter outlined, um, we've done the upload of all of the Middle Georgia Archives um, collections. So this is a small institution. You can see this whole collection, uh, or for the whole institution, they have um, 189 uploads uh, in total that were, up, that were uploaded through this project. Um, this is what it looks like when it's been uploaded. If you were to like click on those individual images, and I want to show you in detail what we actually upload and, and how the, the metadata is maintained. Uh, so if you if you look at these images in Wikimedia Commons and scroll down below the image, uh, you'll see something that will look like this, which is a colored pastel box with all of the, the metadata. So just like you know DPLA harvests the metadata and shows it in the DP.LA portal, uh, we are also um, maintaining that metadata um, in the Wikimedia Commons image that we upload. 
And this is the data that I was talking about that, that we will continually update. So if a, a you know creator or title field or something changes, um, you know through the the regular aggregation process, that will be updated here as well. Um, and just to also point out uh, those uh, the original source, both the the DPLA item record, but also um, wherever it came from originally, in this case, from that DLG site, Digital Library of Georgia site, are all linked from Wikimedia Commons, so people can follow those links back to where they came from. Um, you'll also, if you're looking at this page on Wikimedia Commons, which we will, we can look in more detail uh, in the next hour, um, but uh, you, you do have a chance to see where images are used, um, which I think most people don't see. All of the the final uh, bit below that is all uh, a bunch of technical metadata that's uh, that we that's you know comes from the image file, um, and then a lot of categories at the bottom that that can be added by the Wikimedia community um, and used to kind of um, topically organize the uh, images. So uh, again. Um, you know, taking that image, um, uh, looking for where that would go on Wikipedia. This is an example of an article that could that that um, that image could be added to. So this is what it looked like. This is the before picture, uh, and then this is this is the after, showing that image um, that came from that original digital collection and where it lives now in Wikipedia. Um, with a short caption that was um, just, you know, that, that was the, the only like sort of like original editorial work needed to add, add that image. Um, and and even that is only necessary if there's not uh, already like a just uh, text in the description field that's, um, you know, suitable for a caption. Um, and I wanted to, to just kind of wrap up this sort of like end-to-end -end view by pointing out how um, how things are being used on, on uh, Wikipedia. So we have this Columbus example and I've uh, snapshotted the, um, the usage statistics that we provide for all of the partners in this project. And um, one of the um, one of the things uh, that's I, I hope is coming across is that this is this is very new. We just these uploads just just happened in um, in July. Uh, there hasn't yet we haven't yet had a a chance to you know add hundreds or thousands of images to Wikipedia uh, articles um, because I wanted to give a chance to you know talk to the network about sort of like uh, this work in progress and how how it's um, how it's happening, but. In those first two months uh, that we have recorded data already, uh, you can see uh, it totals more than three million views um, to those collections, and I will just say that's that's more more views than than your collection will get um, just sitting at just the, the views that we record at dp.la, and I'm going to assume <laughs> more views than anyone's collections are getting on their on their own websites. Um, so the other thing, uh, that I wanted to point out is I actually, I pulled the list of the top, um, uh, like page view getting, uh, images from another one of our partners who's been, um, involved in, or whose, whose images we uploaded way back in 2020. So these have been, uh, in Wikipedia articles for a while. Um, the numbers here that you're seeing are just for a single month. So it really is true that the Toledo Lucas County Public Library, uh, another Ohio institution, uh, gets over 100,000 page views in some cases uh, for individual images um, in a single month based on the work they've done in Wikipedia. Um, and so what's interesting here is you can look at the, the list of, of articles and note that some of the, the most, uh, like the high, most highly visible um, images are in articles, which is the left column there, 
that are very broad uh, topics. And so uh, I like to point that out because um, we can think about this Wikipedia project as uh, you know, a way to find a very different audience um, that's going to engage in some of these digital collections you have in a way that you would not have otherwise been able to capture that audience. So people that are reading the a general reference encyclopedia article on Wikipedia about hotel or pharmacy, um, you know, or flood, uh, are not, I'm, I'm going to assume, are not likely to have otherwise been looking in your digital collection site for that image. Um, it's instead, you know, the Toledo Lucas County, um, uh, like the, the, the local history collection that they have uh, may include a photo of, uh, you know, like for the flood, if I look at the, the title there, Flooding on Water Street from 1881, you know, presumably they have an individual photo that's just a, a very good, uh, like demonstrative example of uh, flooding. Um, and so now that gets to be used and accessed in a totally different way um, than it's accessed by kind of by the researchers at your institution or other users, users that you have. Um, so that's all important to think about also when we're adding the images to articles is not just who's like the person or place in this photo, but also what what broader themes or topics can this illustrate. Um, so I see there's been some chat. Um, I'm going to uh, stop here. And this is also where I want to turn it over to uh, Jamie Flood from the National Agricultural Library, who's one of the members of our, our uh, Wikimedia working group, which helps set the direction for the Wikimedia program. Um, and she'll help us with our discussion too. Hi, uh, I'll be moderating any questions. We don't have any yet. So if you have a question that you wanna ask our speakers, please feel free to put that in the chat. Um, I just wanted to give a little overview of our Wikimedia working group. Uh, there, I think there are still 10 of us. We had to swap somebody out that moved on to a different um, position. Our group is chaired right now by Dominic, but we are, I think, going to move to um, co-chair since Dominic has a new position with DPLA. Um, our working group is helping to kind of guide the Wikipedia work and support the pipeline. We have a couple projects that we're um, in the process of right now. We're setting up a meta, which is one of the Wikipedia like sister projects. That's where um, meta is where like pages live about various projects associated with Wikipedia. So we are working on a DPLA one and um, that one will highlight all the institutions that contribute to the pipeline, as well as the hubs. Um, we're going to include recordings like this one there, and it'll just kind of be a single place where people can go to learn about everything. Um, we're also working together uh, to working to put together um, some useful uh, resources about not only editing, but also about joining the pipeline, DPLA specifically, um, how to join the pipeline, what your metadata should look like, um, and how that process works. And so I look forward to sharing that with you all soon. Um, we should have our page up um, within the next week or so, maybe still needing a few changes, but um, that will be up soon and we will be making a page for um, each organization that contributes um, that they can use to put put up, you know, when you need help with something like metadata or um, if you want to seek out some editors to help with a, a lift of adding images to Wikipedia or something like that. Um, and we hope that'll be a, a good resource for everyone and that'll be um, collaborative so folks will be able to edit that however they need to. Um, that being said, we do have a question that came in on the Q and A, which okay, I can't see those. As host. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and read it out. Um, so, uh, the question says, uh, we had started inserting some images from a, a historical map collection, Sam, the Sanborn fire insurance into Wikimedia a few years ago from our hub harvest. Though a Wikimedia editor did not agree with our additions. We were essentially adding them into the 
town slash city slash township page with information about the map under under what we thought was an appropriate section. And the editor removed all of our additions. We tried to resolve with the editor, but they did not agree. Could you help advise? We were frustrated since we felt like we lost time on this endeavor. Haven't revisited this again since it was just one. Um, so yes, that that is um, one possible outcome. Um, I'll answer that in two ways, and then some others here might have experiences that they might want to share too. Um, I I will answer by. Um, First, by saying so, when we in, when we engage with Wikipedia, we don't uh, like we don't aren't able to exert ownership over the content. Uh, you know, we're participating in an online community, so it's very different from other ways in which the institutions might broadcast their collections or their content. Um, so there there is risk inherent in that, um, and and it's the internet, <laughs> and uh, so that that is something that we kind of just have to um, deal with. And the the best um, answer that I can give about how we deal with that is just that, uh, you know, when we when we do, um, when, we, when DPLA does a project like this and uploads for a hub, we're happy to, I, I provide personal, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one trainings with hubs or with institutions and um, provide, uh kind of like tactics um and uh which is a lot of what i was what we're planning to do in the next hour as well is to um talk about like sort of tactics for um you know to set yourself up for success uh you know there we cannot control how someone uh, else acts on the internet um but what we can do is um you know, follow best practices. Um, the other thing I'll point out is uh, we I, I've worked with some um, with some institutions in which you know they're for for any number of reasons their uh, images maybe were only in Wikipedia articles for a period of time and then they fall out of it because someone uh, you know either um disagreed with the edit or or just that you know organically uh the community on wikipedia found a, a different image to go there something like that um the scale of the impact with uh work in wikipedia is such that like even when that happened um you know the images that were in articles for a few months had still seen like half a million page views um so uh I think like it uh, sometimes it can be about you know managing expectations and, and kind of tracking your your success along the way, which I know is maybe not a satisfying answer, um, but a lot of a lot of this um, a, a lot of the work that we're doing is not like uh, is not I think what people are are used to <laughs> the way that that we normally um, you know provide access to our content, but we're really uh, here to use uh, this really visible platform, um, you know, in some ways as a means to an end because the goal of archives and, and libraries is, is not not usually to create encyclopedia articles, but but it, we're there to just to utilize that, that platform. So I don't know if anyone else has thoughts on that. Uh, and I see Jonathan, you're asking for more. I don't, the person who asked that, it came in anonymously to me, so that you can also feel free to speak up if you want. Um, I'm assuming that what they're talking about, though, is just that an editor, another editor on, on Wikipedia, uh, like undid the edit of adding that image because they had s some disagreement with the the quality or appropriateness of that image um, in where it was placed, but I don't know the specifics. Yeah, I think I, um, if you don't mind me jumping in, uh, that the only reason why I didn't jump in sooner is I, since I don't really know the specifics, I don't necessarily know how to 
um, fix it. But one thing that I personally um, share with others when we're uploading images and then adding them to Wikipedia is you want to be really mindful of where you're adding them. Uh, make sure that they um, are a good representation of that article, that they're a good um, illustration of what that article is about. And then also make sure that, um, and this might sound, um, this does add a little bit of extra work, but it's not that much in my opinion. Um, when you add an image to an article, also go ahead and do something else in the article. And maybe that's um, copy editing a sentence, adding a citation, um, really basic stuff, like just improving the grammar or something like that. Um, that just, I feel like sometimes institutions encounter problems with like adding images or adding links because other editors see that as, um, what's what I'm thinking of? see that as like self-promotion. And so when you take the time to improve the article in other ways, that kind of takes that question out of it, if that makes sense. So I think it's important to do some additional stuff when you're adding images, just to um, make it very clear, like your intention is improving Wikipedia. It's not just sharing your images, even though that is your true intention. Um, hope that made sense. And if you, uh, if you stick around for the second half of this, we will turn recording off. <laughs> we'll have more, we can have more of a, um, a uh, free for all uh, editing live um, on Wikipedia and not with slides. And we can also have um, going more, have more discussion about that if we, uh, if anyone wants to share um, specifics too. I also just saw the, the other question in the chat about the recording. Um, since I just mentioned that, uh, typically what happens is the DPLA event page, which uh, currently for like upcoming events is where you see the Zoom registration page um, that will change into the archived recording link. So it will be there for sure. And then we uh, will probably use the link or use the recording wherever it's uh makes sense to put it such as the project page that i have um linked on this slide right now um and any attendees uh we can send the link out to everyone who registered as well does anyone else have any any questions uh, any uh, questions about questions for the Ohio folks, questions uh, about the, the pipeline project as a whole or general Wikipedia questions? All right, I think you're muted, Jamie. Oh. So I guess I'm gonna throw a question to the folks in the room, if anyone um, here uh, is from the hub that's not yet participating. Um, I'm curious to know uh, your thoughts on what you've heard and what are your, um, like, what are your roadblocks um, if you are interested but haven't yet participated? Um, I'd be happy to hear from, from anyone else who's here in the room. And we also have some people um, from other hubs that are partners on this project. If anyone else has um, a perspective you'd like to share for the group from your own experiences, um, it'd be great to hear that.
Okay. Well, I hope that this has been valuable and um, we can also move into the editing portion if people are don't have questions but are sticking around for that. Um, if that sounds like what we should do next, <laughs> let me know. We can start that early. Um, I'm There's just... a, a comment from Elliot in oh. the chat. There's a couple. Um, Teresa's saying that the biggest roadblock they have is standardizing their rights. Okay. And Elliot says they're not um, at a hub currently, but they are at a contributing institution. Uh, the big barrier for us would be right statements. Ours aren't granular, granular enough uh, at this point to know what items can make it into Wikimedia. Would you want to talk a bit more about rights remediation, Dominic, or is this not the right? Yeah, yeah, I can talk more. So um, as uh, Angela and Peter alluded to, one of the requirements for participation is uh, standardized right statements and specifically the right statements that are uh, compatible uh, with uh, Wikimedia Commons as an open access project. Um, so what that means, there's a set of six uh, statements that we consider um, open access. The best way to determine those is if you're looking in the DPLA search site and you see the the rights facet, which is how can I use it? Uh, it's this the exact same set of rights that also determine the unlimited uh, use facet. Uh, so it's things like the Creative Commons, zero public domain mark, um, and then no, primarily we are uploading um, uh, items that are tagged with no copyright in the United States. Um, and, and also, uh, some potentially other things like Creative Commons attribution license or the no known legal or, or no known copyright um, statement. So uh, that that can be a hurdle. Um, uh, the main reason that that's a requirement is because of course our pipeline uh, depends upon um, being able to, you know, programmatically in a machine readable way filter on the rights so we know what we can and can't upload to. The Wikimedia projects. Um, uh, I would hope that the level of impact that we can show um, in uh, this uh, in this project kind of helps to give um, sort of like improve the value proposition for spending uh, resources on um, on adopting right statements, um, and I'm. Also, uh, I would be I would plug the right statements working group um, for anyone who is looking for help on um, implementing right statements or or how to do rights assessments. Um, and would also just point out that we the way the pipeline works is anything that's eligible um, can be uploaded. You don't need to like. Uh, complete a collection or, or or at the repository level be fully implementing right statements um, in order to participate. You can provide, uh, you know, you can tag like, you use a uh, uh, no copyright right statement on like a hundred items and uh, still participate. Another hurdle from Teresa is IIIF compatibility. Their largest um, potential contributor is not currently enabled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, IIIF, yeah. So we, uh, just to clarify, we don't require IIIF, um, but it's one of the ways in which you can provide the, the media location. Um, and uh, I don't know if Peter has any wants to give any insights from the hub level about like technically how they actually um, like determine the the IIIF manifest or um, but we uh, we can upload materials whether they uh, are providing either a IIIF manifest or just a, a bare link uh, uh, or set of links 
to the, the images. And the reason that's a requirement is purely because we need to be able to get the asset that we want to upload to Wikimedia Commons to, to actually perform the upload. So in the case of Ohio, um, we are, like I say, working mostly with content DM where IIIF is automatically working. Um, for the other one, which I think is DSpace, and actually for also content DM, we are dynamically building the IIIF URL. It's not being sent back in the metadata. So we're just looking at the metadata that they are sending to us and pulling apart the um, is shown at URL and then rearranging the bits and creating a new IIIF compatible URL for that server, whether it's content DM or whatever. And one comment I will jump back to on the topic of standardized rights. In Ohio, we actually have policy of, you know, we only upload stuff to DPLA if they have right statements. Um, and one thing I've gotten into is if someone upload, you know, we do a reharvest of a collection and some of the new, newly added records don't have any right statements, we will actually respond to them with the um, URIs for each individual record saying, these are the ones that do not have rights. So you can go ahead and uh, edit those specific records. Makes it a little easier, I think, for the uh, catalogers. That may not be a luxury that all folks have, but seems to be working for us. Yeah, if I can jump in quickly on that last point, Peter, and also follow up on something Dominic touched on. Um, part of the, the aggregation process, like even before the Wikimedia pipeline begins, we go through a process of normalizing all of the standardized rights URIs that we get, because we have found that generally there, there requires some massaging of those values in order to get the precise machine readable value that the Wikimedia pipeline depends on. And those that massaging kind of comes back to the hubs as a part of the, the ingestion summary statements uh, that if you're kind of attached to that ingestion process, that you may be used to seeing under a list of warnings. So as we can normalize those values, there is a feedback loop back to the hub or the contributing institution to alert you which specific DPLA record required some massaging and what was done to it in order to make it a the precise URI uh, that is required by you know, these downstream processes. So that feedback loop of what did DPLA have to do to your values in order to make it actionable does come back to the ingestion process. Okay, we have time for maybe one more um, question, if anyone has any left. Um, I might jump in on the on the right statement really quickly. Um, what we it might be helpful or what we did at CML was um, we start, kind of start with a blanket right statement for cop this copyright undetermined. So then it has a right statement, right? So you can move forward, you know, in a general direction with copyright undetermined. And from there we look at kind of low hanging fruit, you know, collections where. We might have a collection of, you know, a couple thousand photos that we know are okay, and then we can, you know, make those um, no copyright and kind of change right statements that way. So we have a lot of materials in DPLA that we haven't been able to move over um, to Wikimedia because even the even there are some right statements left that are undetermined and we're still working on those. So um, just to echo what everyone else has said, um, it doesn't have to be all or nothing and sometimes low hanging fruit's a good place to start. Thank you.
Thanks. Yeah, and Scott just threw in the the link to our technical documentation on GitHub for what he was just describing. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this portion up. Uh, I'm stopping the recording.